Can you hear me? Yeah, that's, that's great. Wow, it's good to be back. But I'll lie if I say I'm back because the last time I was on scene was several years ago performing in a concert. Uh, first of all, disclaimer, I don't know, I don't own any of the images, for example, this one. Uh, I, I want to let you know that the copyrights belong to their respective owners. And it's great to see you. Uh, I want to thank everybody for attending. I want to thank my colleagues and friends throughout the years. It's been a ride. I'm really grateful for the help. Also, I want to say thanks to the prior speaker, Maxim, and some people up there. And without further ado, let's get started. So why the good, the bad, and the ugly? Uh, it's Kafka streams you are talking about. Unfortunately, uh, I will try to not bore you to death and try to or mimic or replicate what they have done, because I think that by example, we can uh, dive under and see what's happening inside of, the, of Kafka streams. So everybody should be aware that behind the scenes, we have the plain old Kafka producers and consumers. So all these uh, old, you know, uh, trustworthy components are being wrapped and they now provide additional functionality, such as handy aggregate functions, transfer, filter, map, uh, state stores. But everything I'm saying is kind of scary, right? And that's why I want to provide an example how we can do it without Kafka streams and then see why the good thing, what's the good thing about the Kafka streams and what's the, what are the bad things. Uh, and while talking about Kafka streams, I, I just can't. I, I should mention the buzzword, and the buzzword is exactly once, exactly once. And it's bugging me at this point. I feel like it's uh, some sort of a, of a scam, and please, the good guy, please, I'm hanging by the rope, please, please shoot the rope, because I don't know. I mean, I can't. Uh, so uh, what's, what's about it, right? Since uh, Kafka 11, the producers have been overloaded with some additional functionality. So we have two new producers. And don't get me wrong, these producers are not subclasses. They, 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 it's actually the same class uh, which we have been using for so long. And since Kafka 3, the, the idempotent producer will be enabled by default. So it's actually good to know uh, what, what is the idempotent producer and what it does. And out of the box, we get a transactional producer, which, in, uh, which as I mentioned, enables, uh, atomically to, uh, enables us to write atomically to partitions, to multiple topics and partitions, whereas the idempotent producer uh, actually enables us to deliver exactly once. So quick dive, quick uh, you know, refresher, what's, what's inside the producer? I hope it's scary because it really is. Uh, so we have this sender batch, which batches uh, messages for the same topic and partition. Uh, this is where our, you know, bytes configuration and everything uh, happens. You know, we can configure the batch size, uh, the, the, the limits uh, in terms of megabytes. And we have this Kafka thread, which is part of the producer class. And it does all the heavy lifting for us. Uh, so one notable configuration I, I'd like to mention about the producer is the retries. So it's uh, no secret that we can push some messages to the producer, right? And let it do its work. But having configured a, the retry, or have not, depending, let's say we have configured it to retry like infinite amount of times, uh, it's, it's bound to fail at some point because uh, we can send a message to the leader and we might somehow crash uh, while acknowledging this right. And what's the remedy and why I'm pushing the presentation forward? It's because the other important producers allows us, allows us to enable the exactly once delivery semantics. And other important producers are just a matter of configuration. You can literally see the source code and, and they have you know, at some point, if it's idempotent, if it's transactional. So at the idempotent producer, when you instantiate one of them, you ask the broker to give you a PID. And the PID is for producer ID, stands for producer ID. Uh, this, is, this happens uh, in 
uh, your request uh, right to the broker when you initialize the idempotent producer, and it gives you the APOC. But I'll talk about a bit in the AP uh, APOC later on. It's, it won't be evident why it's important at the moment. So what happens when you instantiate uh, an idempotent producer and start sending records? Uh, it actually adds an additional field to all your records, which is sequence number. Uh, why does that? Because in case of a failure, you know, the replica can start up, and you know, because, your item pro uh, because your producer is retrying, it will boot up, it will see, aha, I have this message already being produced and acknowledged and you know, rep uh, appended to the topic, uh, but these I have to skip, and the other ones I have to really write. So your write, if, for example, if you send five messages, right? Uh, will succeed. If you fail in the middle of the tree, you know, the Kafka broker uh, uh, will, uh, the leader will be changed and the other two messages will be written successfully. Uh, of course, I have written some configurations which uh, are needed in order to have an idempotent producer. And the most important takeaway of this is you get exactly once uh, guaranteed, exactly once delivery in your current session. Session, you can think of it as the current producer. If you tear down this producer, Nope, you can have a duplicate messages. Se so I have uh, a, a dump here a, of a topic. So what I've highlighted here is that now each message, you can see my payload on the screen. Uh, it, I probably can't point it, but you can see it on the screen. You literally can see my what, what I actually sent to the topic. You can see the compression type and a bunch of other things. But now you have the sequence number attached and the producer APOC attached to all your messages. So yeah, uh, it's a performance penalty, but not by quite a margin. Uh, I hope if you start to have a feeling uh, what the Adam Potter producer does. So some caveats, some quick caveats. Uh, leave the retrying to the producer itself. Do not uh, try to re do not retry on application level because if you do send and then send again of the same Java object, of course, you end up with duplicates. For example, Spring Retry is a common uh, retry framework uh, most people use. Don't do that. Leave the retrying to the item potent producer. Uh, and if you want some ordering, make sure you set the max flight uh, per connection to one, because otherwise, e the, those records which are sent to the broker might have, you know, they might be unordered. Uh, next, next step, the transactional producers. So what they actually do, they, as a, once again, they allow you to uh, write atomically to a set to different topics and partitions uh, at the same time. And this is important. Uh, the notable thing here is you need to set a transactional ID as a user, as a user. Uh, there might be a one-to-one -one mapping between this transactional ID and PIT might. There is, the broker keeps a map between your PIT and transactional ID. So transactional producers are somehow, maybe you can think of them as a subclass of the idempotent producers, but essentially all this logic resides still in the same class as before, right? Uh, some additional things you need to tweak in order to leverage the transactional producers, top replication factor, and of course the consumer's isolation needs to be uh, changed. Quick dump, uh, some records written using a transactional producer. The transactional producer still has an APOC attached, uh, and now this APOC is bumped every time you try to initialize the same producer with the same transactional ID. And once again, you can see I've still retain the sequence numbers. I still have the producer ID attached. Uh, at the bottom end, I have the commit marker. So the broker is taking care of my records by committing them and placing a commit markers to, uh, you know, after the last message I've sent in this transaction. So you need to configure it, but you need to leverage the API as well. Why I want to talk the, uh, about the API? Because it blocks, and that's, that's honestly important. Some things need to be called once. So in the init transactions, that's the first thing you got to do when you 
when you have a transactional producer. You need to call it once and then tear it down and never call it again. When you call any transactions, you will receive the PIT from the broker and the APOC. And it will block until it succeeds, right? Then you have the normal begin, commit, abort transaction. I, I think we've seen that many times. And I believe everybody has seen them. So, and the other method we have is the send offsets to transactions. And this is where it gets uh, kind of ugly. Because in order to succeed in a certain pattern, which I'm going to explore in just in a bit, we have to leverage this method. So this method sends a map saying, hey, broker, you know, I've, I've did something. I read something from a topic, or, and I want to actually commit my progress, make sure you write my records, make sure everything is fine. Uh, so the APOC is important here because it is used to, to, do, zombie, uh, to, do, to do zombie fencing. And this is, what, this is what the brokers do. So every time you initialize a new producer, it will get a higher APOC. So uh, to avoid zombie writers, the broker will deny any rights from the same transactional ID with lesser APOC. And some caveats. So do not expect that you won't have uh, duplication uh, using the transactional. There is a certain scenario where it could happen. I have written it. I don't want to go into details of it. Uh, what I want to actually speak about is it's recommended to keep a constant mapping between the transactional ID uh, and the topic partitions if we are to leverage the transactional uh, producer. Kafka Streams does, us, do, does it for us. And we need the transactional producer to solve the consume, transform, produce challenge. What it uh, can, let's look at a naive, maybe, I don't know, bad example. It, it, it's not bad by any means. It compiles, it will run. But I've been speaking for a while, and you should guys have questions regarding this code, OK? You should have questions, really. Anybody has anything to say? It will be, it would be nice if anybody spots some something wrong with this code. It's it's hidden. It you can't actually see it. Nobody, nobody is able to spot anything with this code. So we take something from an input topic, you know, via the good old poll method using a Kafka consumer. We do something with those records. And then we send, you know, uh, an output to another topic. Uh, somebody, anybody has? You're not sure that the data is the yeah, not only that, not only that. So you don't know whether. So many, many questions about this code, right? You don't know the, w the, w the consumer. It's isolation level. You don't know when this consumer commits offset. Is it automatically? Is it, are they committed manually inside this do with records? Why, when does it happen? What do we actually do with those records? Do we call something in between? When we go into this do with the records method, what's happening? Are we calling a database? Are we calling a service? And then producing, right? This can fail. Are we using other potent producers? So maybe this picture uh, can show us like where we could fail in the middle, in between, and have you know unexpected output being you know duplications or count edit or double counting. So we can fail to write, we can fail to acknowledge commit offsets. I've put it in the bottom, but does it really happen uh, as a fourth call, or is it happening between? the writing and acknowledgement. You don't know that. We don't know, with, you know by leveraging this code. Uh, and it's obvious that now we have this consume, transform, produce pattern, right? And we have two different modules doing two different things. They, they are communicating with the broker right, on their own ways, whenever they want, or maybe when, whenever we decide to. And that's bad. That's bad for transactionality, because if we take a step back and see what transaction, uh, transactions are all about, uh, they're all about 
you know, atomic consistency, is isolation, they have to be durable. And in our case, in Kafka, they have to be scalable. So we need to handle rebalance. Um, and, you know, brokers going down, replicas out of sync. So many, many, many things can happen. Um, and we need to actually do something with those records and, c and say, yes, appended, everything is fine on one go. But we were doing like four before, right? Uh, the solution, of course, exactly once. But wait, wait, Kafka streams, wait, wait, not so fast. I mean, wait. Uh, I was sweeping through the presentation because I wanted to actually get to this part. So <clears throat> let's let's look at this. It's not pseudo code. It's actually, you know, uh, a guideline how to implement the consume, transform, produce, and. Uh <clears throat> I'll give you a second to realize what's happening. And first, we need to you know, subscribe any transactions once. Then we loop and poll, begin our transaction every time, you know, handling any errors. When we are done doing what we do with the consumed records, we you know, commit the offsets, commit the transaction. And we, of course, we have to handle, right? We are talking about transactions. We have transactional state. We have transactional errors, we have timeout errors, we have to be careful and catch all of that. And that's the good thing about Kafka Streams, he does it all for you, and that's cool. Uh, but I want to take a time and dissect such a, uh, an application. So, let's see. All right. Uh, I hope it's big enough. So let's imagine I was writing this code 3 a.m. in the morning as usual. Uh, you know, not, nothing wrong with it. So uh, I'm looking at having a class, having its own thread, and having its own producer and consumer. Yeah, don't do that, OK? This, this is bad practice. Do not use static methods. Uh, they are bad for testing in, in the long run. That's why it's an imperfect example. But it's my take, right? I mean, I can do whatever. Uh, so we have the consumer. We have the producer. Let's take a look at the producer. What I have uh, set up is a transactional ID config, whatever. I mean, I set it manually. Uh, then I have all the accompanying uh, properties enabled. Item potence, which is implied. So whenever you set a transaction ID, Kafka will set it for you. But you know, for the visual, I've put it on the screen. So it will enable the item potence part. It will enable, uh, you know, uh, it will enable uh, the acknowledgments. So you need to acknowledge uh, that every replica has appended what needs to be appended to the lock and replicated the topic. You have the retries the max per flight requests. So this transactional producer will have, will send the messages in order and retry infinitely, expecting an acknowledgement from every, from every uh, replica. Going back, uh, one step back, we have the, uh, the output, the output consumer, the, the input consumer. So I don't know if I'm reading from a topic which is which a you know item potent producer or transactional producer. So I'm setting the uh, you know for the visual. I'm using a transactional consumer. So it's it's in isolation level read committed. So it will skip any records which are not committed. Maybe it's it's a good time to actually mention that whenever we, we send messages to the broker, even in transaction, even without transaction, they are appended to the lock immediately, like whenever, whenever the broker can. So it's been appended, right? And you decide to abort those records. Those records will still remain in the, in the topic unless it's compacted, right? And the, when you start consuming from this topic, you should skip any messages which are marked with aborted. So that's, that's one thing uh, I forgot to mention. Going back to, the, to our imperfect 
uh, stream, Kafka stream, uh, Alex stream. We have the consumer in the producer setup. Uh, the consumer, the Kafka consumer, cannot be uh, used by other threads. I mean, uh, you need to have your own thread. Only one thread should manage your Kafka consumer. So closing should be done by my internal thread, which I have here. Mind you, this, this, actually, this code here actually comes close to what we have in Kafka streams. Uh, or, or at least what I, I reverse engineered, because I'm not yet hired by Confluent, so anybody, or Apache, so <laughs> take note. Uh, <coughs> then we ha I, ha I have a main method, uh, of course. I have a shutdown, a shutdown hook, obviously, I'm closing. Uh, and the beefy part, where I was talking about previously on the slide. So the run will you know, init the, uh, the transactions. It will subscribe the consumer to one or several topics. Then uh, I'll start to pull from, from the top picks and partitions. And then whenever, whenever I have something to process, uh, I'll just uh, begin a transaction right, and start doing something with those records. So in my case, in my case, I haven't actually explained what my domain model is, but it doesn't matter at this point, honestly. I have an external transaction, which you can think of as buy sell, whatever. So each buy sell is attached to an account, and we want to keep an aggregate. You know, what's our position for those buys, buys and sell and the quantity and stuff like this? So here in the middle, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm consuming every transaction from the topic, you know, I'm deriving a key out of this model, and, and then I have a concurrent hash map here, which I will use this key to actually you know, aggregate and add those transactions to this account and security, because this is what my position key is. It's actually, uh, it has two fields. It's account ID and security ID. Uh, so essentially, this is, this is my state store. Wow, you know, this is, this is my state store. This is exactly what, uh, what's happening behind the scenes, kind of what's happening behind the scenes in the Kafka Streams uh, ecosystem. So this is what, this is what we, we would call a state store, because I'm taking some from topic aggregating, and then I'm producing it. Of course, I decided to produce it in the compute method, because nobody will be able to edit my key if I'm sharing somehow this state store. So I'll produce everything. Everything's secure. Nobody's touching my position key uh, from the state store. I'm, I'm aggregating my position, you know, adding some stuff to it. And then I'm producing, you know, I'm producing to a certain topic. And then once, now, now comes the ugly part, actually. Once I'm done with all of this, I need to notify the broker and say, hey, hey, brother, uh, I have read something from uh, from the topic and partitions. And I want to send the latest offset that I have actually managed to, to, you know, to work on with plus one, with plus, uh, plus one. Uh, it's not so evident here, but I don't think we need to dwell so much on it, okay? This should say I have read this topic partition up to the last offset plus one. And we need to send that to the broker via this API I was talking earlier about, send offsets to transaction. Uh, so we will send the offsets to the transaction, and hopefully we will commit. We will commit. But then, but then we have to do some handling, right? We have some exceptions to worry about. More, more, more things come into play, the ugly part. So if, if we encounter a producer fenced exception, which means that another producer with the same transaction ID has been started with higher APOC, we need to terminate. We need to stop. We need to finish what we are doing and close, uh, close our producers. Uh, if, if we time out, for example, or if we are trying to actually go from one state to the other, where we are not allowed to, we need to abort our transaction. And, this come, and now comes the, first, the, the fun part. We have to reset our consumer. Mind you that I've used the subscribe method of the consumer. So when using the subscribe method, 
the broker will give you the last offsets to start from, and then your consumer will, you know, continue to poll. It doesn't care, right? It doesn't care if you committed your transaction or not. So you need to go back. You need to go back to those offsets which you have aborted because you want to maybe retry them or, I don't know, and you need to actually reset to the last committed offset, like so. Uh, and that's, that's mostly it, honestly. Then you, you, you do this infinite amount of times. So I hope I can give a hint. And can anybody actually tell me something bad about my state store? I mean, it's an it's a in-memory state store. It's a concurrent hash map. But in, in the world of, of Apache Kafka, we have an issue here with this state store. Anybody is able to spot it? No? OK. We were talking about a single thread at the moment. What about if we spin like several more? So the rebalance protocol will kick in. And now we actually have to, we are now currently grouping from every partition, right? If I have two more threads, I'll, I'll have to split in, uh, the state store you know, for half of the partition and for the other half the, of the partitions, depending on our, uh, you know, um, top, uh, partition assigning, assi partition assignment. You c we can set that, right? We can set our own class for partition assignment, except in Kafka streams. You can't do that. You only can have stream partitioner there. So I need to actually take my state store, what I have, and copy it to the new thread, like exactly to the memory of the new thread. Um, it could be another machine. It could be on the same machine. Doesn't matter. We have an issue, right? We need to replicate our state store and only care about half of the keys now, half of the partitions we are consuming from. And you know, at this point, it gets really, really ugly and nasty. So fortunately, fortunately, you you don't have to do this all by yourself. But I hope it sheds some light on what's happening behind the scenes. So Kafka Streams, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're a good boy. You can come uh, to the stage. Uh, I want to talk uh, briefly about what the topology is. Anybody, anybody know about the topology? How many of you have any idea? Can anybody raise their hand? If no, if no, OK. Uh, so a topology is you know, something what a, a Kafka team came up with. Uh, and it's just a connected graph of processors. So we have two distinct ones, uh, three. The source processor, the source node processor. So the source nodes in blue, we actually take input. So these are our, these are our consumers in my demo application, you know, in my attempt to replicate a stream. Uh, the processor nodes is, for example, uh, what I do with my records. And lastly, we have the sync node, which you can think of as the producer, right? So the producer will write to, to an output topic. Uh, this, is, this is what the topology looks like. And how they leverage it is actually they, they, they have these so-called tasks. And one task is replicating this topology, which you built initially. So this task takes the topology, right? And, you know, Puts, starts putting records one by one through the, through the topology. And this is important, actually. I want to actually make sure everybody understands that, that your task will you know, consume, and at a given point in time, we will only process one record. So you can imagine, uh, for example, throwing a marble, and you know, the marble will go through the different, through different routes and end up in the sync topic. Right? This is how you can think of it. And it's called the processor context, which some of you might have encountered or might have not. Uh, then we have the, the, the stream thread, right? exactly what I was doing. Uh, the stream thread will have tasks assigned to it, and each task is bound to some input partitions. Mind you, it's important. It's important to remember that the task is bound to a certain set of input partitions. I can even show you the, uh, the code itself. Uh, 
regarding it, but I'll skip it. I don't want to bore you to that. And of course, one more thing, one thread, you know, one thread can have now multiple tasks. Those tasks have the same topology being replicated, polling from different partitions, and you know, writing to some output topics, uh, doing something with their own private state store. So you can think of it, the state store is kind of bound to the partition, the input partition, same as the task, right? So sharing state store between threads is not a good idea. You can do it, uh, but I doubt. But I doubt it's, uh, it will be any good. Uh, so on a, on a big scale, this is how it looks. One more thing. Each task is assigned its own producer. So once again, the producer uh, for each stream task is somehow bound to the, to the input partitions. More good things about it, right? We, we saw the example. We saw that we can give it a go. We saw that exactly once uh, you know, is not bound exclusively to the streams. It's actually part of the original, of the original Kafka library. Uh, the good thing about Kafka streams is you can spin up a, a, a stream application in a matter of seconds. Literally, it's just one import, and you're good to go. So it's a lot. It's it's powerful. It has minimal footprint. It doesn't depend on a lot of things. So it has these great out of the box uh, functionalities, and one of one of which is windowing. Everybody loves it. Windowing allows you to batch uh, multiple records in a time in a sliding time window or whatever you prefer. Uh, at the heart of the Kafka, Kafka streams are the k-stream and the k-table. So the k-stream is just, is just a, how, how to say, it, it doesn't have any rule how it will consume the input, uh, the input partitions. It just consumes them, right? And it looks like, like the, what I've shown on the presentation. You pull from some input partitions, and those records, one by one, get processed by your application. But k-table is kind of different, though. So it, it requires you to, it's actually, it's called a change log. Uh, they, we, can, we can use, uh, you, you should spot this word quite often. So what the k-table does is it keeps the latest state. As you can see, uh, for every partition, I'm just keeping the latest, uh, the latest record for this particular key. Let's assume the topic is key, of course, and has nice keys. Uh, <coughs> so change log and compaction kind of work the kind of work the same way, right? It's a different way to represent your your topic. You're saying, I want my topic to be the latest keys uh, out of every partition, and you know you treat every every new record with the same key as an update. And the state stores, we already, we already showed uh, a basic one in memory. Well, we have a persistent one. The guys uh, there did a, a great job. There is a lot of explanation how RocksDB is able to leverage just an ordinary uh, hard drive and be able to keep up with Kafka, uh, with, the, you know, with the Kafka streams and the network and all, all of this. Uh, we have the in-memory one, which I showed you. We can have a custom one. Uh, I said already that state stores are bound to, uh, only to one task, uh, and state stores they can be exposed uh, and queried. Uh, that's that's if we uh, if we implement if we, if we implement it, of course. But it it can be done. Mm. All the state stores listed and available by the standard library are fault tolerant, and they can have change logs. Change logs is uh, a backup topic where you keep your uh, state, you know, and in case of failure, you can pick up from where you've left off, you know, while while doing something with the state store. Let's say aggregation in my simple example, which I've showed you. Uh, and now the bad, in my opinion, of course, repartitioning. Mm, I don't think many of you. Uh, will actually agree with me, honestly. But I think repartitioning is bad. 
And what is repartitioning? Repartitioning is when we start our a stream task with a, with a certain key, right? We start at the top, or when we, we start with a certain key, and while we do something with this record, we change it. Now, logically, this key actually should belong to a different task, which is kind of correct for, their, uh, for the Kafka streaming uh, model, for the model which they have. Uh, and I can go back and we can see that, uh, for example, uh, if you can see that my application is mapping topping one partition, uh, partition one to uh, exactly to topic three partition one. So I take a key from partition one and I change its key. Now, the question is, does it really map to partition one or partition two? Should this key really be uh, processed by application two, thread one, or should be processed by application one, thread one? Mind you, these are two different machines, or maybe different application on the same machine. But this, this, is, this is, in my opinion, where it falls, it falls short in terms of performance. Because now you, have, you start with this key, you change it midway, and now you have to somehow send it to the proper stream thread somewhere, or maybe on the same machine as I said, maybe, maybe somewhere else. So what they do is, uh, behind the scenes, it creates a topic for you. It, it, change, uh, it creates a repartition topic for you, so the other stream thread are listening, every stream thread is actually listening to this repartitioning topic, and if their records, if this record belongs and maps to their input topic, they'll pick it up and process it. Which actually somehow splits now the processing, uh, I I you know, in, in two, right? You start uh, in one of the threads and you can end up in the other. That's, that's kind of iffy, right? Uh, and the other bad thing about, about streams, and I want to uh, show an example in a bit, is access to records, uh, records, Kafka records, headers, offsets, partition, whatever. I'm quite sure everybody who's using Kafka here in the room is using some form, is putting something in the headers. It could be something which will help us with the serialization and deserialization. It could be some metadata which we need uh, later on. It could be something else. And Kafka streams, y y you can hack around it. You can hack around it uh, and access those, but I don't, I don't like hacking around. And I think this is where it falls, falls short for me. Then the other, the other bad thing, in my opinion, is resetting the offset. Oh my god. Uh, since this stream application is live and breathing and consuming, producing from multiple topics, multiple places, everything is all around the place. You can have one topic, you can have 100 topics, 100 input topics, 100 output topics. Uh, in between, you can have more change log topics for your state store, uh, for what else? I, you can actually write something in between before producing to the output topic. And in order to reset all your application or you know, just, uh, just the state store or just the input, just the subset of the input topics, uh, it's, it's quite cumbersome. You need to use the tool. I mean, obviously, obviously, don't get me wrong, it wasn't designed to do that. The Kafka Streams was designed to fire and go. That's, that's how you, you should be thinking about it when you want to leverage uh, the Kafka streams. Is you start with some information, you fire it, and let it go. And don't think about resetting offsets and going back and doing some updates. No, it should be live and breathing. You, sh you shoot, you cut the rope, and hopefully you don't die you know, uh, from the movie. <coughs> and now. Let's try to actually, uh, I, I'll be the, the bad guy. I'll be the bad guy now. Uh, because Kafka Stream is awesome, don't get me wrong. 
let's I want to set up uh, I want to set up the the following scenario it's a real world example it's a near real world example so let's get let's get to it external transaction topic so I have this external transaction model I don't have uh, right access to this topic so I can only read I can only read and they're pushing unique uh, unique trade IDs uh, attached to this transaction so they are only pushing. There are no updates. So w you have to take it and shoot, right? Th that's what I said in the beginning. Uh, OK, OK, we can do it. Uh, so bummer here. The topic itself doesn't have, doesn't have a key. So it has 48 partitions, no key. And I want to actually map it and uh, aggregate all this information and push it to a topic of 12 partitions. The other requirement, the other requirement is so this position should be able to be updated via other means. So we can, we, later on, we will have, for example, another topic, adjustments. And we want to get what's on the adjustments topic and update this position. Right? So this should be reflected to the state store and to the output topic. And it's no duplication allowed, of course. We don't want to double read. Uh, for example, the user is buying uh, like 100 shares. We don't want to double count, so we are not allowed to have duplicates. We, we, can, le we can leverage the duplication, let's say, by a trade ID. Uh, and that's all. Right? So let's... Uh, because uh, I have like eight minutes, I need to actually sweep through it. Let's see. Let's see what it takes to uh, set up a streaming uh, a streaming application. So you only need to include uh, the dependency to Kafka streams, and honestly, you are kind of done. You can you can have a main where you would start with a stream builder class. This is the class which uh, will allow you to build a topology. So what I'm building here is the topology. S and getting back to the example, I start with the external transaction topic. So mind you, don't do the serialization like this. You can set it via a configuration. It's way better to do it. I put it there for the visuals, you know, because uh, in two lines below, uh, we can see we have serialization once again, and I'll explain why it's there. So don't do that, first of all. OK, we start with the external transaction model. That's good, that's good. Let's see what's inside. OK, let's see what's inside. Uh, sorry, didn't, didn't use Lombok, didn't felt like using it. So we have quantity, cost, trade date, count ID, security ID. Uh, I hope some people of you can already uh, spot the key which we need to aggregate. So this key is actually can be derived and, be and is contained in the value itself. It's right there. So we can derive the every, you know, for every transaction, we can derive the key. So this key represents a position for this account, for this security ID. And for security ID, you can think of, let's say, I don't know, Meta, maybe, uh, Google, whatever, security, stocks, Anything like that. So this is the this what what is coming in the tra external transactions topic, and this is how the position looks like. It's pretty simple. I, I wanted to, uh, you know, not over complicate things. You should you should be storing for this key. You should be storing the quantity and the cost. See, simple. You do you you do maths, right? You subtract and add. Uh, tra uh, transactions based on the key. The key is uh, right here as a class, right? We have it. Everything good. So we start with the stream builder class. We say, hey, give me a stream from the external uh, transactions topic, uh, whatever it's named. Please, please. Uh, you know, down the stream, give me, give me this topic uh, serialized as a Java object. So it is depicted on the screen. 
we can see that it's, it says it returns a case stream with, which is void because we don't have a key, once again, and the external transaction class. All right, so far, so good. We group by, which can change the key and can lead to repartitioning. So we instruct the aggregator to group by the key by extracting the key from the external transaction. And this is, this is where uh, we have to hit the bummer of repartitioning because we are changing the key. So while we can use the, this object group to it to actually name our repartition, uh, repartition topic, and we, as seen on the screen, we actually also need to provide serialization and deserialization. So now our application will start read from the stream. It will start deriving the key out of the external transaction. And it will group them. While grouping them, it will deserialize if necessary and uh, serialize them, push them to the repartition topic. So any other threads can actually pick up from this repartition topic. And this, this takes I.O. and puts stress on the broker, of course. It's something we don't want in the trading world. We want to be low latency, right? OK. We group by the key. And once, once we group them by the key, we, uh, we have a group stream which now has the position key and the external transaction. So we call the aggregate method because you know we we have this. We start with the stream, we group by it, creates another stream, and we continue you know going down the topology. Then we aggregate. You know we call the aggregate method to give us a new position and keep adding this external transaction. So this add method knows how to add this transaction, whether it's a buy or a sell. Uh, and we also instruct it to keep the progress in memory. So I have, uh, I have this uh, key in memory key value store, which is exactly going back to our, to my Imperfect example. This is what was this was this was my concurrent hash map. So the thing is, and the good thing, the great thing is, yes, we can uh, we can actually log it, enable logging for it, uh, which means that it will be it will be sent to a topic. We can configure. Uh, I have added for the visual. You can, we can configure this topic, which uh, keeps our uh, aggregated position, right? And we can also have caching, which enables us to, you know, buffer before writing and sending downstream this aggregated position. Then finally, I, I call to stream method and write it to the position topic. Of course, once again, you need to provide serialization and deserialization, and then, as I said, takes I.O. Uh, after that, we do a build. And if I go into the build, uh, you can see that it gives us a topology. So I was not making up this word. Uh, we start the Kafka streams, and we're done. So if I run this application, it will start uh, consuming from the topic and do all the aggregation I was doing in my, in my application. Same, same idea, uh, less lines, uh, handled really better, handles rebalance, handles uh, you know, failovers, uh, has fault tolerance, has, uh, you know, solved our problem with the state store, you know, replicating the state store to our new, uh, you know, to our new application. Whenever we spin up this, uh, this application on another server uh, with, the same, uh, with the same application ID, I forgot to actually show the, the properties. So whenever we spin up, uh, the same application with the same ID, uh, the workload will be split, uh, which is awesome. Thank you guys uh, in, you know, at Kafka and, uh, and Confluent. Uh, and while this, this, is, uh, this is happening, you know, uh, my offsets are committed. Uh, I have ex I enabled the exactly ones. There is V2 as well. Um, and that's mostly it. This is, this is 
this is what you get from Kafka streams. And it's great. I love it. Uh, I hope I was able to uh, you know, explain why it felt short for us. It felt short because of the repartition, and you can't actually do it uh, in memory somehow. You can filter it, and you, know, you can do the ugly thing and do it yourself somehow. But it didn't fly for us, honestly. It, it, it's so simple example. And now, imagine uh, the last part was, in the meantime, I want to consume from another topic and apply everything uh, to from this adjustment topic to this state store, which, honestly, you can join streams, you can branch streams, uh, you can do co-partitioning and co-grouping, but it, it, but it doesn't fly. It doesn't, it doesn't fly because, uh, he, because my key can be, for example, if I'm targeting the security ID, and since the key is security ID and account ID, I can have the security ID, let's say, one on all the machines which are running this code. They, ha they can have the same, this is the same security ID, or maybe I want to update all the positions with this security ID, and now I have to hit all those machines with this request and they have to handle it, and they have to update their state store, which didn't fly for us. I mean, we couldn't. Uh, I actually couldn't. I tried to leverage global, global state stores, global tables, but there is a concurrency issue there because I, don't, uh, but because I, can't, miss, I can't miss anything in the adjustments topic. Adjustments topic is targeting a particular security, and I can't miss that. I need this to be you know, parsed, and it, this needs to change the whole, the state store and produce to the topic. Uh, so these were my uh, dramas with uh, Kafka streams. As I said, uh, I'm not a professional from Confluent. I'll be glad if they can contact me and help me out with this example. Uh, I tried to leverage the processor API, but it didn't fly once again, and then that's where the ugly part came, really the ugly part, and we did it by hand, using you know producers and consumers, and you know employing all I said about the item potency, uh, resetting back offsets. So we did this by hand, and what we gained, we gave sub millisecond throughput, so less than you know one millisecond below throughput, and yeah, uh, 